Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Seattle Seahawks coming up next. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, this was a team after the Russell Wilson trade that looked like they might be bottoming out. But for years, the Seahawks have had great success in the NFL draft, as you well know. And they've used the last few drafts to really restock this roster. And they certainly have restocked this roster and have gotten back to playing football the way that they want to do it. Seahawks football, which means running the ball with authority on offense. They've added runners, offensive linemen, and now they're just being forceful in the way they're going about their business, the way that they did it when they ran the Super Bowls. But meanwhile, the visiting Steelers come into 2023 with something to prove. They finished above 500 at 9-8 and eight last year, but wound up on the outside looking in in terms of the playoff race. And you and I both know how it is around Pittsburgh. Death taxes and the Steelers finish 500 or above. But they want to get beyond that. They want to get back to those days when the Steelers were playing deep into the playoffs for the chance to go to the Super Bowl. And they feel like this team is continuing to get better. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. And we will not see a run back on the opening kickoff. This will be a touchback. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level, and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. Throwing first play is Pickett. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. That's caught. Allen Robinson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 10. Good for a Steeler first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Now again, it's Harris on second down. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Third down and six. Now pick it. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. And on fourth down, Presley Harvin on to punt for the Steelers. This is taken at the 18. Call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. As I remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia, 
He was coming off a of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Geno now to throw. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. A shotgun snap for Smith. That's to the rookie Jackson Smith and Jigba. And he's brought down. The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. They run with a second year man. It's Kenneth Walker. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. On second down, here's Smith. Left side, he finds Smith and Jimbo. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 27-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. Now it's Smith. And his throw is incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now to the ground. Here's Walker. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Throwing on third down, Smith. And that is incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried on the field was he far enough was he close enough to the first down sticks absolutely he was right there by him and i think he was thinking first down before he caught that football yeah gotta catch it first because if you don't catch it there's no chance of picking up a first down myers kick is good and the seahawks grab a three nothing lead so pretty good opening drive that'll make the home fans somewhat happy they wanted six but they got three in the early lead and they should be happy the guys look good getting down the field that's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away on the return from his end zone Godwin Igwebuke and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line so Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession the defense got the better of them last series forcing a punt see if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive first and ten Tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. 
Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. From the 31, here comes second and a yard. Looking to throw, pick it. Got his man, it's Warren. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Back to throw, pick it. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 14 yards that time for number 14. So what do you do if you've got a defense in cover three trying to keep everything in front of them? The answer seems obvious. Just work those routes in front of them. This is going to be a hitch route, but he's operating in plenty of space, and he makes the catch here for a first down. On first and ten, it's Pickett. Throw left side, complete. That's Johnson. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And now two yards to go on third down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And Harris is not going to get there. Great work defensively to stop him short. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. down. Here's Presley Harvin on to punt. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field ready for their second drive. And yeah, they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns. And this will be a Seahawks first down as he gets this up past the 30. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. Back to Walker on first down. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Alex Highsmith simply would not be stopped on that play. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. On second down, it's Walker. And he'll get a couple up to the 29. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Now a third down throw, but it missed. 
This is the target incomplete. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. Now Austin. 13 yards the tally on the return there. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. The crowd maybe losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Pick it to throw on first down. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. Now a first down carry for Harris. As he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Motioning to the left is Robinson. Pick it, back to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. That sack, it goes to Boye Mafe. And they weren't in zone coverage, they were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. Throwing on third down, here's Pickett. Well, throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. How about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. On oh, it's Presley Harmon now as he'll send this one away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions last time out. They had to punt it away, this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10, just shy of the 30. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. That's a win to maneuver. And this will be a Seahawks first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Walker now on first and 10. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 40 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now Smith. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. 
second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. This second and four, as they've got it as we resume action. Up the middle they run, it's Walker. He stiff arms him, and they can't bring him down. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the red zone now, Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that will bring up second down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Here now, second and four. Up the middle, here's Walker, powering forward, and he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. And this is an example of breaking down a defense, because in a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Walker. No signal yet. I don't think he got in. He didn't. They'll mark him at the one. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. So stuffed from the two, now what? You know me pretty well. What do you think I want here? Play action? Definitely. Let him get outside and create. And if he has to run it, he has a little bit more space. Walker with another carry. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Kenneth Walker taking it in from a yard out. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Well, he's been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was Ken Walker finishing things off with a touchdown run. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, Three punts isn't a bad thing, but when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 23. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Quick completion here to Johnson. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. From the 29, here's a second and four. Harris running straight ahead. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Now that's a big time run. Lightning in a bottle, forget it. He exploded out of the bottle for that type of a pickup. Now 
Now run straight ahead with Roy. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. It was Jaron Reed who got him down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. This is caught by Robinson. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Here's Pickett. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So here's a first and ten at the 38. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. His throw incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Pick it. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. But it looked like a march to the end zone is in a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. From the gun, here's Pickett. Able to find the open man. That's complete. He's going to go out of bounds but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Pick it. He's going to throw it again. Oh, and that is incomplete. Nice progress down the field. Was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. From the 21, it's second and 10. Now Pickett. Looking for Pickens. He's got him on the out route. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third down, here's Harris. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. Pickup leads to fourth down. Now that was a big time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere near it. So Pickett is off to the sideline, and Chris Boswell is on for the Steeler field goal try. This will be spotted at the 20, so it's a 30-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So the third drives the charm. They are on the board, albeit with just a field goal. Yeah, three points from three drives. That's not going to win you a whole lot of football games. Hopefully the fact they were able to move the ball a little bit can wake up their offense. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Taken at the goal line. And a nice 
nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. So a six-carry drive the last go-around touchdown on the end of it. We'll see if they can duplicate that here. I think that they would like to. I know every runner that we've ever met would love to carry the ball more and more and more. In fact, we keep a ball in the booth just for demonstration purposes. You're holding it right now. I'm going to give it to you. Is it is it heavy? Is it that heavy? No, it's pretty light. It's pretty light, right? So keep <laughs> giving it to him and let him do his work. It's not going to slow him down. If it's light for me, it's definitely light for him. Here's Walker to start the drive. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 103 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. No gain on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Running left is Walker. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. From the gun on third down, Smith. And he is caught. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 24-yard line. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Now Gino on first down. This is the tight end fan. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 11 more on that one and another first down. They're just going to run a drive route here with their tight end. Let him get upfield about 10 yards and then move toward the middle of the field. This ball's right on target and it results in a first down. Smith on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And now it's second down. To the air again, Smith. That's into the hands of Parkinson, the tight end. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. And the Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, Smith. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. One of the tight ends comes in motion. Here's Walker, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Defense really sold out there to stop the run. Understandable down near the goal line. Now on second down, you have to wonder, might we see play action here and a flip right over the top? Our score, 10-3 to three with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Play action. It's Smith. Under pressure, down he goes. 
sacked at the 10. T.J. Watt, the blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? have taken a two touchdown lead now man he just ran a terrific route extremely hard to defend when it's run that precisely and the ball's delivered that accurately now Myers for the extra point it's up and good and that makes it 17-3 so that one a long 11 play drive and it ends with a Tyler Lockett touchdown. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive, and they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Pickett's throw pulled in by Robinson here. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be left with second and a couple. Pickett now from the gun here. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Pickett back to throw. Man open is Robinson. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Going to let one fly for Robinson. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Pick it right back to the air again. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. To the air on first down with Pickett. A short one there to Firebuth. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Now 
Now second and three. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's a second drop. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. Trying with Pickett here on third down. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Steelers first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. Oftentimes we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Boswell's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports halftime report. It was a strong first half for the former Spartan, Kenneth Walker. He's already over 100 yards rushing for the game and has a touchdown run as well. All right, coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always, as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game as a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. That's another beautiful throw right there. It gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll get this out wide to Metcalf. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll make it second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Ball at the 33, second and nine. Throwing now is Gino. That completes it again to Metcalf. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. 
So that'll be no better than an incompletion, and it's second down. A defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. 110 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the second time. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Here's second and ten. Off play action, pick it. Pressure comes, he's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Daryl Taylor got in there to drop him. So one quick easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Pick it in the Steelers in need of a big play here. Third and long after the sack. They're going to look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. The defense shaking their heads. Not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the give, this is Harris. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and nine. Here's Pickett. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. They did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. 
36 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. On first down, it's Smith. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Again from the 20 after the incompletion, here's second and 10. Now Gino. This is Fan on the short completion. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And they will take over first and 10. Looking to throw, pick it. A short one there to Fryermuth. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 35, here's second and a yard. They hand this off to Harris. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. He gets it complete to Harris. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Give him a gain of five on the completion at its second down. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. A quick throw out wide caught by Robinson. So the completion good for just three. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Now Harris. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. 45 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take him the distance, but a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always oh, a nice luxury to have, isn't he? First down, and they go back to Harris. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Here's a second and eight.
Pick it a look to throw it here. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Just what they need a lecture from me, but so far offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. Here's one deep for Pickens. And this is caught inside the five. And in for the Steelers, touchdown. George Pickens, 43 yards. And the Steelers are back within a score. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. And he will get into the end zone to cut the lead down to a single point. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. Well, now how about this return? He's to midfield. And he's going to take this all the way down inside the 40. I know the special teams coach will not permit himself a smile here, but inside, he's glowing. This is what he practices for. This is what he schemes. This is what he watches tape to put himself and his team in a position to score points, an absolute dream return. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker in the Seattle offense. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Smith. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. Well, it's certainly going to be a lot tougher adding a touchdown to that lead now since they're facing second and 20-plus. Big-time sack to start the drive and put the opponent way back. Let's we'll see what kind of play call they come up with here. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Geno out a throw. Pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Alex Highsmith dropping him for the second straight play. Might want to think about blocking him here on third down. So when you have good field position to start a drive and you give up back-to-back -back sacks, that can be demoralizing for a team. And Pittsburgh with six defensive backs in the game here on third down. From the gun, here's Smith. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Now here's Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here's Austin. So possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. 
George Pickens back out now with the rest of the offense. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. And when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, makes, you do. You makes get you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Nothing too fancy, just a carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against this 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? the nose guard right got to be able to move him otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle nice job by the center got a little help from one of his friends playing guard and now a throw on first down there but it's incomplete let's phrase this delicately okay might have had a better option instead of throwing the football into double coverage he was blanketed i was surprised that he went his direction yeah should have thought maybe about the check down take the completion keep moving a good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Back to throw, pick it. That's complete to his tight end, Fryer move. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll bring up fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and four. Dallas up the middle. And yeah, this won't be enough. Stopped a yard short after a gain of three. Fourth down. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation. And I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed. But the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. Oh, a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. A good pickup there. 21 yards. 
And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Here's Harris. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Harris going to get it again on second down. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. They'll run again with Harris. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You can go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Now a second and six. A handoff for Lord. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a quarterback coming over in the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball is moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. A good decision in the end. The pull and run gets him nine yards and a first. If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's going to be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart. Took it himself, found a way to reset the downs, and advance the ball. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On the ground, it's Harris. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. He finds Pickens over the middle, and that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 15-yard line. 14 yards that time for number 14. What a throw right there for the first down. He has taken some real punishment in this game, but still standing in the pocket completing that one. He's a flat-out warrior. There's no question about that. How about him stepping up into the teeth of the rush and delivering there for that big strike and that big pickup? Running left, it's Warren. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Pick it, going to bootleg it. And he's got his man in stride, complete. That'll go for a gain of seven. And now we've got a third down and three. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred the defense. Now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment.
Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Now they'll bring one of their tight ends in motion right. Pick it back to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line. First down. Surprised that wasn't a run. I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Another shot from the one on second and goal. Harris is not going to get in. In fact, he'll lose a couple of yards back to the three. It's a loss of two, now third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. Pick it now, third and goal. That throw finds Pickens in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Steelers put together a fourth quarter drive to take the lead. They're quite the comeback here. They have erased that deficit, pushed themselves out in front now here in this fourth quarter. Well, this game's kind of felt like a horse race, hasn't it, partner? Because you had the other guys run out to their big lead, but then slowly and surely, they've been creeping up and closing that gap. Now they've stuck ahead in front here late in the game. The finish line's not far away. They need their defense to finish this thing off. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that will make this a four-point game. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The pressure is on now. They're being shut out here in the second half after a decent first half offensively. And they need their best drive of the game right here. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 24. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, it's out. Smith lost it. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And it'll be first and goal at the seven-yard line. That feels like an accumulation of the pressure we've seen all game. I mean, he's been on the turf a whole lot because of sacks. Eventually... Something else happens as well, and this time it was a turnover. Yeah, caught up to him. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They'll be hoping to work a little clock and try to add on to this slim fourth quarter lead, but whatever happens on this drive, certainly a huge fumble recovery by their defense at this juncture. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Following the fumble recovery, Pickett. Got his man, it's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Allen Robinson, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers will add to their fourth quarter lead. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over, and here a late turnover leads to a fourth-quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here, and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Boswell good with the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11.
Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Now the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 24. Throwing now is Geno. Over the middle, finding Smith and Jigba. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Now it's Smith. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. The offense on third down, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. Here it's third and two. They'll try for the first with Walker. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Well, sometimes, Brandon, there's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there, a big third down conversion. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. They're giving those short little routes, tackled him in bounds too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Here's Smith. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Back to throw, Smith. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. They only needed one yard on third down. They get 10 instead by going to the air. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agree. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Smith throwing again. He hits his target, Lockett. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. They'll look to throw again. And that almost their first INT in the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. And now offensively, it's third and 10. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Over the middle. 
and there's a diving catch. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 14. It's a gain of 14 down to the 14. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Noah Fan, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So certainly some importance to this one now. After the touchdown, they could get this down to a field goal with a two-point conversion. Geno's going to throw. It's complete. But he will not get in here. He stopped up short of the goal line, and this will remain a five-point game. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us, because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Iguabuque to return it from his end zone here. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock defensively. They have three timeouts, so do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit, and you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all of their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. On the give, it's Warren. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. going to wind up incomplete. And sensing the momentum, maybe changing here a little bit, Charles. Yeah, this defense is going to get off the field quickly, and their offense got them a touchdown the last time they had the ball, so they should get another shot. The Steelers send out their punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So Geno and the Seahawks down by five. A minute 52 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Smith. It's caught. Lock it. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Smith's going to throw it. 
This one goes underneath to Walker. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it. But they've got to continue to move quickly. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Smith. This is Fant on the short completion. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. They come up now on second and two. Smith to throw. This is caught inside the 15. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the four. Wow, wow. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last-ditch effort to try and steal this win away. So now an extra point doesn't help much. They'll try to go for two to make the difference a field goal, and they can lead it by three. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they up their lead to three. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Iguabuque to return it from his end zone here. And he returns this to the 22. Now it's the Steelers' turn. Trailing by three after the touchdown and two-point conversion. 37 seconds to go. They've surrendered a double-digit lead but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. Just over 30 seconds remain. Here's second and 10 now. Looking to throw here. Pick it. Got his man. Now a loose football. The ball comes out. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, They've got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week in practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week.
We got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Got to figure the rush is going to be fierce again as they come up second and 13. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. On third down, here's Walker. Now a timeout called for by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. Myers' kick is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden they're down. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. This is first and 10. Pick it to throw. And the Seahawks defense gets to him and they bring him down. Boye Mafe in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner, although on that last play they were so backed up it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play, and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.